Hi, uh, I'm Deng Yu. I'm a graduate student from Dr. Jeremy Levy's research group in University of Pittsburgh. Today, uh, I'll talk about our efforts on non-scale control of the metal insulator transition using ultra-low voltage electron beam lithography at lens number luminate strontium titanium tetrastructure. Mm. Uh, quantum science is a big topic in modern physics, and for many years we're facing uh, grand challenges and open questions in quantum science and engineering. There are questions such as uh, how could we achieve quantum computation, and there are examples such as superconducting qubits, and questions as how can we do quantum simulation, and we know there are ion traps and ultracold atoms and so on, and other questions such as quantum sensing and quantum metrology. We believe that controlling quantum matter lies at the center of all these grand challenges. Uh, the quantum matter here uh, we're referring to is the Lanzmann Illuminate Strontium Titanate Heterostructure, which has rich phenomena that being discovered. There will be a 2D electron gas formed at the interface with high mobility, and it has metal insulated transition, superconductivity, magnetism, and tunable spin orbit coupling. All these uh, properties make this system a great platform for um, quantum electronics. And um, with the metal insulator transition, we have developed a uh, unique technique called conductive FM lithography at the interface, which can be used to, uh, to pattern uh, nanostructures such as nanowires and tunneling barriers. To do that, we start from 3 unit cell LL on a steel substrate, which is insulating but highly tunable. The titanium and gold are here as the uh, interface contact. Uh, when we apply a positive voltage to the AF AFM tip and drag it along the top surface, it will leave a path of protons. These paths of protons will act like a local top gate, tuning the interface below the path through metal insulator transition. This writing process has a very high resolution the width of the wire can be as small as 2 nanometers, and this process is also reversible, which means we can easily erase the path by applying a negative voltage to the tip and erase it. Using this technique, uh, our group has developed different uh, devices at the LLS2 interface and explored the property of it. Uh, we have single electron transistor and we observe the electron pairing without superconductivity at the LLS2 interface. And we can interplay with the graphene and uh, combine it with the complex oxide heterostructures. And we also observe the tunable electron-electron interactions. We have a uh, ballistic nanowires electron waveguide, and uh, we observe the 1D nature of superconductivity at the LLS2 interface. And most recently, we observe the Pascal uh, connected sequence at the interface. So all these are, uh, are very good results from our group. But that at the same time, we're also facing the challenges and limitations of the connective FM lithography for this technique. So I summarized that, uh, these as the uh, writing efficiency issues. So the writing speed uh, of connective FM lithography is in the range of 10 nanometer per second to 1 micrometer per second. At the same time, the device is naturally decaying in the air on the time scale of hours, so the AFM is in the ambient condition. So these two conditions uh, limit the complexity of the device we could make. At the same time, the scale is uh, literally limited by the AFM scanning size, which is uh, the largest one we have is 90 by 90 micrometers. So to overcome uh, these limitations, here, uh, I introduced the ultra-low voltage electron beam lithography as a method. This ultra-low voltage EBL will introduce a speed boost and size explosion uh, to create conducting structures at the LLS2 interface. The writing speed can be up to 10 mm per second, which is 10,000 times the writing speed of conductive FM lithography, and the scale of the, of the writing can be as large as a wafer scale. At the same time, we're using the ultra-low acceleration voltage, which is around 100 volts uh, region, 
to avoid damage to the oxide structures to the sample itself. And the writing process is uh, in the vacuum. So uh, the, the device itself will preserve during the vacuum, uh, in the vacuum conditions. It will have a much longer lifetime. Moreover, this method I will show you uh, later on. This method can write through thin layers on top of LLSTO, which will give us, which gives us the uh, possibilities to combine the LLSTO with the other material thin layers, such as graphene, bar nitrate graphene, other Van der Waals materials. And we published uh, our. Uh, first set of data on APL and it's selected as the cover of the December issue. So please take a look if you're interested. Um, first, I'll, I'll show the writability of the ultra-low voltage EBL on the LLSTO. To do that, we add the electrical feed through to the EBL system, which, which allows us the institute electrical measurement during the writing. The acceleration voltage is 100 volt, and the writing speed is 10 millimeter per second. Um, when I uh, write, when I do the electron beam lithography to connect these two electrodes, uh, we can see a clear conductance jump from monitoring the conductance. And this writing process is also reversible, uh, which means uh, the structure can be erased by applying a negative voltage to the AFM tip and erase it. Mm. So it's naturally to ask the question, uh, what's the resolution of this writing process? And to do that, uh, I designed this structure which contains uh, a series of nanowires. The nanowires are separated by 5 micrometers apart to uh, suppress the um, cross-talking between each other. And there is a gap in the middle of the nanowire. And here, we're varying the gap size. And when the gap size is um, at the scale of the uh, resolution, uh, it will be covered by the resolution. So uh, during this time, we're monitoring the conductance. With this plot, you can see a conductance jump plot with respect to the gap size. And there is a significant change when the gap size is between 20 uh, and 5 nanometers. So that's why we claimed a writing resolution to sub 10 nanometers, which is uh, at the same scale comparable with the uh, connective FM lithography. So after that, we look at the cryogenic uh, characterization to the structure we designed. And uh, basically, it's a full terminal nanowire, and we cooled it down to 50 millikelvin using our PPMS dilution refrigerator. Uh, the structure shows superconducting behavior below 200 millikelvin, which is consistent with the LOSTO structure. And here is a plot for its superconductivity. Um, Moreover, uh, as I mentioned, these methods can integrate with the graphene LLSTO. So here we have CVD graphene transferred onto LLSTO with wet transfer method, and we etched it into the rectangular shape, shape in the middle of a pair of electrodes. Uh, when I use the uh, EBL, try to expose a nanowire connecting these two electrodes across the graphene, we can observe a clear conductance jump from this writing process, which shows uh, the ultra-low voltage e-beam e lithography can write through the graphene and create connecting structures at the LLS2 interface. And uh, most recently, we also integrate with the boronitride graphene uh, stacks and its exfoliated uh, graphene and boronitride, which will provide a better quality of the graphene itself and transferred it onto the LLSTO uh, using uh, PC and chloroform. And this is, we uh, collaborated with Ben Hunt from CMU. And here you can see as we are uh, connecting two electrodes across the boronitride graphene piece, we can also observe a clear connectance jump from this writing process, which has shown that um, uh, we can uh, write through the boronitride graphene and create conducting uh, structures underneath the graphene and at the LLS2 interface, which is really encouraging because this is showing that we can uh, 
do dynamic gating of the graphene from the LLSU interface. So we're really looking forward to the later on experiment. Um, recently, we established a whole new system for the method, a Gemini SEM450 with Ray Selfie Plus system. It will provide better low voltage performance and, um, uh, and high speed uh, lithography electronics. And we add the um, dual pin socket for the electrical uh, measurement and we have the electrical fit through to it. So we're really looking forward to um, the later on results we can get from the new system. Uh, here is my summary. Uh, I showed that ultra low voltage e beam lithography can create uh, nanostructures at the LLS2 interface and it has the superconducting behavior. We can write through the graphene layer and borrow natural graphene piece and we're establishing our new system um, um, during the experiment. And we're really looking forward to the uh, multi-layer Van der Waals materials into play with the LLSU. And that's all. Thank you.